Hello everybody, my name is Zach Hartley and I built the PrintQ software. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use all the different features, how to send jobs, how to control printers, how to add printers, and everything that you need to know as the operator to make your farm more efficient. Let's jump right in. Okay, so right now we are on the dashboard. This is basically the home page and kind of the command central for us. On the top here, we have a lot of different controls that I'm gonna walk us through. And on the bottom, we can see all of the different printers that I have connected. Right now, it's just under 70 printers. And so what we are gonna do is first look at the printers themselves. Every time you connect a printer, it's gonna show up here. I call my printers number one, two, three, four, five. You can call them whatever you want though. Underneath the number, you will see that it is showing you the status. Currently, it is printing. It's 94% done. This is the file that it is printing, and this is how much time is remaining. It will also show you the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature and the group that is assigned to the printer. The idea behind the groups is you probably or you may not want to start your entire farm at the exact same time because you might trip a breaker or something else might go wrong. And so what you may want to do is assemble your printers in groups. Let's say you have different size nozzles or you have different brands of printers or you have different models of printers or you have different settings on certain printers. I would recommend grouping all of those similar printers together so that you can control them as a group. For me, I have 70 printers downstairs and if I start all 70 of them at the exact same time, it trips a bunch of the breakers and so I separate it based on levels on my racking. So I have three level racks. Top level here is group one, group two, group three. That way I only start two groups at a time and the third group gets started after the first two have started printing so that I never trip a breaker. That's the idea behind the groups. I would recommend grouping your similar printers together, whatever printers have the same settings or print the same files. You can also adjust the group right here by clicking edit and then moving it up or down, whatever you'd prefer. I'm gonna leave it as group one for right now. So that is the printer screen here. You can also sort your printers based on the group. You can sort them based on the status. You can sort them based on what is happening with them. One tool that's really nice is you can sort them by which printers are offline. And that is going to show you which printers need your attention and where you need to go fix something. The other thing that's really nice is that I have set it up so that you can look at it in a compact view. So if you have lots of printers like I do, you can very easily see, okay, all the blue ones are printing, the orange ones are finished, the green ones are ready, and the red ones need my attention. And you can very easily see your entire print farm at a simple glance. And so this is the overall dashboard, and this is how you see what is going on in your print farm. You can also click on each printer and it will expand it so you can control it there. You can also delete the printer or you can set it to service. Service will make it so that it can't receive any jobs and so that you can work on it without having to delete it from the software. This is a setting that we're gonna be playing with over the next little while, so it may or may not be there when you watch this video. Moving up, we're just gonna slowly move up. It kind of makes sense here. So just above all of the printers, you have this basically this status bar and it is gonna show you how many printers are in the ready state, how many printers are printing, how many are offline, how many are paused, how many are finished, how many are set to service and how much filament you have used. This filament is gonna track all of the jobs that are sent to the printers. If you have a failure, it's not gonna be able to capture that. It's not going to be exact. It's gonna give you a rough idea of how much filament you put through your print farm. I would not rely on it for your costing or anything like that, but it will give you a rough idea. And then you can also see how many printers you have connected to the system. Above that, we start to get into some of the controls. So here is the button to mark all of your printers as ready. What, when you would use this is let's say your entire farm finished, they're all in the finished state and you don't want to go to each individual print it and bring it back to the home screen. You can mark all of them as the ready position with just one click and that is going to allow all of those printers to start taking the next jobs that are in the queue. I will caution you though, I don't use that button because if I reset all of my printers to ready and I have a bunch of jobs in the queue, it's gonna start all of the printers at the exact same time. So keep in mind when you use this, just make sure that you actually want all of the printers to get started if you have jobs in the queue. Next one is to reset the filament count. This will bring it back down to zero. Stop all printers here is basically your emergency stop. It should immediately stop all of your printers in the event that something is going wrong or even they're just printing the wrong file. And then you can delete all of your printers. This is really simple. You click on the button right here and it is gonna get rid of all of your printers. And if you ever have an issue where the software is freezing or it's not reloading, 
click on the re reset locks button and it should basically kind of reset the system, give it a little kickstart and it should get that freeze out of the system. Now this section right here, you, you saw it, but we just got rid of it. It's reset printers by group. So I'm gonna add the printers back and I'll show you what that button does. So we are going to add the CSV. We're gonna upload it here, add these printers. They're all gonna show back up on the dashboard here. And what's gonna happen is the reset printers group. I added this because when my entire farm finished and I clicked the mark all finished as ready, they all started back up and blew all my breakers. And so instead of having to reset all of the printers to ready, you can now set the printers to ready by group. And so you can set group one, group two, group three, group four, you can set them individually to ready. And what will happen is the software will distribute jobs to the ready printers. It won't distribute jobs to the finished printers. And so now if my entire farm has finished a print, I'll go, I'll remove all of the parts and then I'll set group one and two to ready. It'll start the next jobs. When that's done, I'll set group three to ready and then it will run the entire farm so that I don't blow any of my breakers. That is the idea behind this section here, the reset printers to ready group. Now above that is how we send orders. In this system, we don't send orders to individual printers because we are focused on a farm. We are, we are doing production prints. We are sending a lot of stuff. And so if you wanna send orders to individual printers or you wanna be able to just pick and choose an individual printer to send all your orders to, just give each one an individual group. Otherwise, I recommend grouping them based on the rack that they're on or the height that they're at or the type of printer that they are or the nozzle that they have. For me, I do it by the level in the rack. Now to send a new order, all you're gonna do is upload the G code file here. You're just gonna click on choose file. You're gonna choose your G code file. For us, it's gonna be test3.g code. The quantity, you can set whatever quantity you want. You could do 155 or you can do 1555. It doesn't matter. It's gonna add it to the queue and it's gonna keep sending that order until it has sent 1555 jobs. Now here is where it gets important. You need to select what group of printers you wanna send it to. You can select one group or you can select multiple groups. For us, we're gonna send it to groups one and two, for example. This button right here says enable ejection. Most of the time, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn this off. What happens with enable ejection is it allows you to enter a custom G code in here. And the G code is what controls the printer and tells it to move around. If you wanna experiment with this, you can create your own G code or you can use some of my templates. You can insert it in here and what happens is when the print finishes, it will then send this G code to that printer. Most of the time, this G code is designed to push the part off the front of the bed, and after it runs the ejection G code, it will then reset the printer to the ready state. That means that it will be available to accept the next job. And so if you're gonna use the enable ejection feature, just make sure that you understand how it works. It is designed for you to create a G code or use one of my G codes to eject the part from the printer and then reset it to the ready state so that it can take the next job and basically automate your system. If you don't wanna use that, make sure it is clicked or, or unclicked or unchecked is what I mean. And then once you're ready to go, you click on send order and it's gonna add that order to the active order system. My farm is actively running right now, so I don't wanna send 1500 jobs, but we can definitely send one right here. And then you will see it appear in the active order section. You can see the job name, the quantity, the groups that we are sending it to, the job status is gonna show as pending when, and then when it has reached the quantity that you're looking for, it will show up as complete. And then ejection will show as disabled, when you have that button unchecked or the enable ejection box unchecked. After that, you can also move this job in priority. So you can move it up or down. We don't have any other jobs in here right now, but you can move it up or down. And if you ever get the quantity wrong or you wanna add uh, more prints to one of your jobs, just create a new job and move it right to the top or right underneath the other job so that it prints them in line. And that's kind of how you adjust the quantity. Now that's it for the main dashboard. I just wanna walk you through the stats page really quick. There's not a whole lot of data on here, but I'm gonna be adding as much as I can over the next few weeks. The other one that you wanna might see is the printers. I've walked through this in the other video, in the first video, but you wanna add your printer name, the IP address, the Prusa link API key, and then assign it to a group and then click add printer. And the last page that you might wanna consider here is the license page. If you wanna connect more than three printers, it is gonna cost you just a small, small little fee. It's a dollar per month per printer. Um, and so if you want 10 printers, it's $10 per month. If you want 20, if you want 50, or if you want more than 50 printers, 
please reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. Let's get you a quote. We'll get you a deal. Let's have a chat about it. But if you want to purchase one of these access codes, you can go to printq.ca and you can purchase the access code there on a monthly basis. Again, I'm trying to make it as affordable as possible. If you have 10 printers, it's $10 a month. It's really not bad. And if you have three printers or less, it's completely free. So definitely check it out. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Let me know what you think of it. If you're running into any glitches or technical issues, please let me know. We are consistently working to refine it and make it better. So thank you so much and we'll talk to you soon.